the Thunder Dragon Nation. In the eastern part of the Himalayan range, located south of the Chinese border, a small kingdom, larger than Taiwan, emerges. This nation, known as Bhutan, proudly claims to be the happiest country in the world, although we cannot verify this claim. Interestingly, this nation is among the 30 poorest countries globally, where the economy is not measured by gross domestic product, but by gross national happiness. Let's explore what hides behind this hermit kingdom about which we have little information. The history of Bhutan dates back to a possible ancient migration of Tibetans through the Himalayas, establishing the current population. Archaeological findings suggest human occupation in the mountainous valleys since ancient times. The arrival of Buddhism in the 7th century marked the documented beginning of the country's history with the construction of temples under the rule of the Tibetan king Samson Gampo. The Buddhist Saint Padma Sambhava, known as Guru Rinpoche, played a crucial role in spreading Buddhism and introducing tantras in 810 AD. In the 11th century, Tibetan-Mongolian migrations occupied Bhutan, and after the decline of Buddhism in Tibet in the 11th century, disputes arose between subsects, with the Jalugpa school being the most powerful. Anarchy in Tibet led to the fleeing of monks to Bhutan, influencing the introduction of strategic zones. In the 17th century, Shabdrum Nawang Namgyal unified the scattered warrior fiefs and strengthened Bhutan's national identity by building impressive zongs and introducing sacred dances. After his death, internal struggles weakened the power of the Shabdrum for 200 years. In 1885, Eugene Wanchuk consolidated power and established ties with the British in India, marking a significant stage in Bhutan's history. The dual system of government, with spiritual and administrative leaders, persists in modified form to this day. Wanchuk, the third Drukjialpo, ascended the throne in 1952 and led significant efforts to modernize Bhutan during his 20-year reign. He introduced the National Assembly in 1953, marking a move towards a constitutional monarchy. In 1951, faced with the Chinese communist threat, Bhutan closed its border with Tibet and allied with India, initiating a modernization program primarily supported by India after the Tibetan uprising of 1959. Wanchuk implemented reforms such as the abolition of slavery and the separation of the judiciary from the executive. Development initiatives included the construction of roads, a national museum, a library, and other projects in Timpu. After periods of conflicts with Tibetans and confrontations with the British in the 18th century, Bhutan experienced civil wars in the 1870s, finally unified under Eugene Wanchuk in 1885, with British support. In 1907, a monarchy was established under Wanchuk, and three years later, Bhutan became a British protector. Independence was achieved in 1949, with India guiding foreign affairs. Under the reign of Jigme Dorji Wanchuk, Bhutan gradually adopted a policy of openness to the world and gained recognition from the United Nations in 1971. Wanchuk, the fourth monarch, assumed the throne in 1972 and led the country's modernization while preserving its distinctive Bhutanese culture. His focus on gross national happiness highlighted his commitment to the well-being of the population, distinguishing itself from the conventional gross national product. In the 2000s, Bhutan faced security challenges, particularly related to separatist groups from Assam, India. Various guerrilla groups, including the ULFA, established bases in the southern forests of Bhutan from where they launched attacks towards Assam. Despite failed negotiation attempts in 2003, pressure increased on Bhutan to address the situation. On December 15, 2003, the Royal Bhutan Army, in coordination with the Indian Armed Forces, initiated military operations against the guerrilla camps in southern Bhutan, displacing the separatists. Additionally, in 1988, Bhutan evicted over 100,000 Nepali-speaking residents, creating a refugee community in temporary UN camps in Nepal and Sikkim.
With a population of around 730,000 inhabitants, Bhutan adopts a unique approach to measuring the quality of life through gross national happiness instead of gross domestic product. Although it was relatively isolated until the 1970s, modernization, including internet and television allowed since 1999, has been well received, especially among the youth. Despite embracing modernity, Bhutan faces challenges such as poverty, youth unemployment, around 7.3%, and a growing public debt representing nearly 90% of the GDP. Prime Minister Chering Toge acknowledges the need to curb excesses and address the task of producing goods for domestic consumption and export, emphasizing the importance of economic growth without shortcuts. Bhutan derives most of its income from electricity exports to India and tourism, which reached a record 100,000 visitors last year, generating revenues of over $227 million. Although there are debates about allowing more tourists to boost employment and income, currently, international visitors must pay $250 per day, which includes accommodation, transportation, and meals. We can say that the existence and maintenance of gross national happiness GNH are attributed to two factors, the rootedness of Buddhism as a religion, philosophy of life, and politics, and cultural conservatism and ostracism regarding the international community. The rootedness of Bhutanese society in the Buddhist religion is easily seen in their concept of happiness, which is infused with Buddhist ideas, inherited from their history and evolution as a nation-state. As religion has been closely tied to political power and Bhutanese society, Bhutan, with its main languages Dzongka and Sharchap, has close linguistic ties to Tibetan, and Bhutanese monks read and write the ancient Tibetan version called Choki. Although the people of Bhutan share physical traits similar to Tibetans, there are no historical records confirming their migration to Bhutanese valleys from Tibet. Tantric Buddhism, with Guru Padmasambhava as its founder in the 8th century, is fundamental in Bhutanese society, organized around this religious practice. It is estimated that around 84.02% of the population follows the Buddhist religion, while approximately a tenth is Hindu. All citizens must adhere to the national dress code, Driglam Namza, especially in public places during the day, being enforced more strictly in some districts. In Bhutanese society, women historically have had more rights than men compared to neighboring cultures. They have rights to land ownership, and the hereditary pattern follows matrilineal descent, where the main mother controls family property. Both genders work together in agriculture, and men perform household tasks, including cooking. Although there is an emerging pattern of a more Western family structure in villages, Bhutanese tradition has allowed both men and women to become monks, and marriages are conducted by mutual consent, with the option to live with the family requiring more labor after marriage. Annually, in Bhutan, an important zong or village celebrates a religious festival called Tse Chu, attracting residents from neighboring districts to participate in religious rites, socialize, and make offerings to the Lama or monastery. The event highlights religious mass dances, known as Cham, performed in a large courtyard or square. Each dance, lasting several hours, extends over two to four days. These dances, some with roots from the founding of Bhutan in the 17th century, bless the audience and convey principles of Tantric Buddhism. At dawn on the last day, a large tapestry called Thongdral is unfurled in the Dzong Square, believed that its mere sight brings spiritual liberation, and it is rolled up before the arrival of the morning sun. It has been a pleasure sharing information about this isolated nation with you. If you found it interesting and wish to see more content, I invite you to subscribe for updates and continue discovering new regions of the world. I'm you, and I'll see you next time.